Hi folks, happy Wednesday. Today's target is to be able to balance level three equations. Uh, as I mentioned in yesterday's video, there's not as much of a jump between level two and level three problems as there is from level one to level two. Ultimately for Friday, you're going to wanna to be able to do level one, level two, and level three balancing equation problems. So you'll see about as hard as they get today, and then on Thursday we'll get to practice it. Let's get down to business. This is, this is a level two problem that is similar to a level two problem we went over yesterday. The reason it's a level two problem is because there's oxygen in two places on the reactant side. And so when you're balancing the oxygen, you need to remember to take into account the fact that there is oxygen in two places on our reactant side. Go ahead, take a moment, write down the unbalanced chemical equation as well as the element bank and see if you can balance this level two equation. See if you can effectively hit yesterday's target. If you can't, don't worry. We'll go over it once you've tried. Good luck. All right, now that you've had a chance to try this problem, let's go over it. So we've got two iron on our reactant side and three, one, two, three oxygen on our reactant side. One iron on our product side and one oxygen. Okay, so it looks like we're going to need a little bit more uh, iron on our product side. So I'm going to add more FeO to our product side. Now I've got two iron and two oxygen. One, two, one, two. Cool. All right. Um, so it looks like I may need to balance my oxygen as well. Um, I can try and add another FeO. And when I do that, it is going to give me an extra iron. So my oxygen is balanced, but now my iron isn't. I need more oxygen, um, or sorry, I need more iron on my reactant side. So I'm going to add more Fe2O to get more iron. So I do, I get more iron, I get four, and I also get more oxygen. One, two, three, four. Cool. All right. Um, <laughs> Unfortunately, in doing that, neither my iron or oxygen got balanced, but one thing that I can see is that if I go back to my product side, if I add one more FeO, then I'll have four iron and four oxygen, and I'll have a balanced chemical equation. This is a really cool chemical equation. What we're effectively doing is we're taking one type of something called iron oxide, we're taking iron oxide one, we're burning it with oxygen, and we're turning it into iron oxide too. And I thought we could actually do this one as a little bit of a demonstration. This is kind of a fun one. So my iron oxide one is just some steel wool. I'm gonna put the steel wool in my clamps and I'm gonna use a little bit of heat from this mini blowtorch to burn the iron. And I'll get a little bit close so that you'll be able to see it. cool. Yeah. And what we're actually doing here is we're just rusting the iron. And I know that's kind of weird to think about, but in chemistry, rusting basically means you're combining oxygen with something. And well, when you're burning it or rusting it, you're adding oxygen to it. So we're just rusting it really fast. Pretty cool. Nice. All right. Um, we're going to go over a couple more problems today. Let's do that. Cool. Alrighty, folks. Um, this is, I would consider this to be a level three equation. We're gonna go over two level three equations today and this is one of them. So first of all, let's just kind of start this problem off just like all the others that we have done. Um, two nitrogen, one oxygen, two hydrogen. Okay. And on our product side, we've got one, two, three, four, five nitrogen. We've got uh, one oxygen and we've got one nitrogen. Okay. All right, so when we get into level three equations, um, it can be really difficult for people to figure out 
how do I start? Because we've got multiple things that need to be balanced. Where do I begin? And what I would recommend is just choose the one that seems simplest. So hydrogen is kind of tricky because hydrogen is in two different places. So let's just try and balance the nitrogen because that's only in one spot on both sides of our equation. Okay, so we're gonna need another nitrogen. We've got one nitrogen, we've got two nitrogens, so we're gonna need one more nitrogen. Let's get some more, NH3. Cool, so that means we're gonna have two nitrogens and common mistake, a lot of people would say we'd have six hydrogens here. But remember, we actually got two more. So there's a total of eight hydrogen. Okay. Um, all right. Now we've got our nitrogen balanced. Now we just need to balance our hydrogen. So if I need to get eight hydrogen on both sides of this equation, how am I going to do that? Well, pretty straightforward. I'm just going to add more H2. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hydrogen. So now, balanced equation, right? These problems don't have to be super difficult. They're just a little bit harder than the level two equations, okay? I'm gonna give you guys a slightly more challenging problem to try on your own first, and then I'll go over it with you to make sure that it's right. Okie dokie, folks. Um, this is a particularly interesting chemical reaction. It's one that has a really big role in our world. In fact, some of you might actually recognize it. This is the reaction that plants undergo when they have photosynthesis. So right now, as the trees are budding outside, as the grass is growing up and everything's starting to turn green, this is the chemical reaction that's taking place. See, plants are sucking in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, and they're sucking in water from the ground. And you're using that to create glucose and oxygen, as well as some other things, but we're gonna keep things simple to start off with. All right, so that's a really interesting concept. Let's actually take a minute and dive into that. What if I asked you, where do trees get their mass? Do trees get their mass from the ground? Do trees get their mass from the air? Where do trees get their mass from? So, this is a really common misconception that people have. A lot of people think that trees get all of their mass, that trees get big, because they're like absorbing nutrients from the soil. But if we actually look at the photosynthesis reaction, we can see that most of this mass is gonna come from carbon, from the carbon dioxide that it sucks in. The water vapor a lot of this water is gonna shoot off as oxygen, right? The hydrogen is gonna stay there, but hydrogen atoms are really small. And they take up a very small part of the tree. But as weird as it is to, as, as weird as it is to say, trees gain their mass by sucking in gas, by sucking in carbon dioxide gas and growing larger. So that's just kind of one of the takeaways we can take from balancing chemical equations we gain a better understanding of our world. It's kind of cool. All right, so we do need to balance this chemical equation. Um, this is definitely a level three equation. See if you can balance it. Good luck. All right, let's go over it and see if you guys were able to balance this. So we've got carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen. And we've got carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen on both sides of our reaction, which makes sense, right? You can't create something new that didn't exist before. Everything that was there at the beginning of the universe will be there at the end. Um, everything that happens at the start of a reaction, it's the same on the opposite, opposite side of the reaction. It's just rearranged a little bit, right? Okay. So let's quick count our atoms. One carbon, one, two, three oxygen, two hydrogen. Six carbon, 12 hydrogen, 
6 plus 2 is 8 oxygen. All right. Whew. So remember what I said in the previous uh, practice problem. With level 3 problems, choose the element that seems like it's going to be the simplest to balance first, because typically it is. So carbon is only in one place in our reactant side and our product side. Oxygen is in multiple places. So let's do the carbon first, and then we'll figure out the oxygen next. All right. So I've got six carbon on my product side. The only way I'm going to get six carbon on my reactant side is if I have six carbon dioxide molecules. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Yeah, six. So I've got six carbon now, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen oxygen. Oh, that's nice. Okay. So my carbon's balanced. Um, let's look at the hydrogen next, because the hydrogen is only in one place on both sides of our equation. So let's balance the hydrogen. I've got 12 hydrogen on my product side. The only way I'm going to get 12 hydrogen on my reactant side is by getting a lot more H2O. So I've got two. Another H2O gets me four. Another H2O gets me six. There's eight. There's 10. And... Just to clarify, this is definitely on our reactant side. All right, so we've got 12 hydrogen now, and we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, plus 6 more. We've got 18 oxygen. I think that's right. Yeah, good. All right, so now our carbon is balanced. Now our hydrogen is balanced. We just need to balance the oxygen. Okay. Well, if I create more glucose, if I create more C6H12O6, I'm going to create more carbon and more hydrogen. And that's just going to create a never-ending cycle where I have to add more carbon dioxide and more water, and it doesn't work. But if I add more O2, well, then I'll just get more O2 on my product side, and that's really what I need. So let's add some more O2. Let's see. So I need 18. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And we've got a balanced chemical equation. What is the last thing that we need to do before we are done with this problem? Think you've got it? We need to add our coefficients, right? So we've got 6 CO2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, we've got 6 water molecules, and we've got 6 O2 molecules. That's about as challenging as these problems get. Um, like I said, I'm going to post a video tomorrow as well um, that just kind of goes over more practice problems with these. If you would like additional practice, I'll also have a link posted that can give you some additional practice if that video doesn't feel like enough practice. Cool. I'll see you next time, folks. Take care. Bye.